Hi, I'm Michael Butler. I'm the Artistic Director of Center Rep. We are the resident professional company of the Lesher Center for the Arts. And I'm here to talk about our upcoming, and very exciting, 2012-2013 season here at the Lesher Center for the Arts. And I'm here today with a guest, Gabriel Marin, our Director of Marketing. And we're going to talk about all the fabulous musicals and plays and comedies. And plays with premier, music. And plays with music uh, that we'll be doing uh, in our 2012-2013 season. Uh, so, you know, every year uh, we start the season and end the season with a musical. Absolutely. We think that's great, right? Yeah, that's part of our commitment to the center to do be, be half of the four show musical package. Right, that's with CCMT. With CCMT. Right. And, uh, in, you know, so we, we traditionally open and close the musical. So right. It's a great way to do it. And this year we're opening with a musical called Lucky Stiff and closing with Sweet Charity, a great mm -hmm. American classic musical. So Sweet Charity is the story of our heroine, uh, Charity, who's uh, all she wants to do is find love. And she tends to hook up with the wrong kind of guy <laughs> again and again and again until she finally finds what she and we hope is the perfect guy for her. Uh, doesn't quite work out that way, but it's got a great story of her pluck, her courage, her great heart and humor mm -hmm. uh, in the face of romantic adversity. <laughs> <laughs> well, well said. I know you're really excited about Sweet Charity, right? I, I'm really excited about it because being a musical theater uh, uh, neophyte, I mean, to come in and just see, oh, oh, what's this about? And to approach this and then you, you're like Fellini, oh, F Bob Fosse, oh, Neil right. Simon wrote the book. Right. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's very exciting and, you know, uh, um, I mean, and then it was a, a very successful movie, Shirley MacLaine. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Charity. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, because it's based on the Fellini movie, was it Knights of Cabiria? Right. Yeah, that was then turned into the Fosse directed and choreographed musical back in the 1960s. Which is set in, which is always fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what a great period. Yeah, we've we've loved that that era for, for a couple yeah. of other shows. I mean, Boeing, Boeing. Really stylish stuff. Oh my goodness, great, yeah. great era for that. Yeah. So it's great songs, great dancing. It has three enormous dance sequences in it: the Rich Man's Frug, uh, Rhythm of Life, and a big marching band number. It's fantastic, big dancing, which is always fun to do on the intimate Lesher stage. Uh, Timothy Neer is directing that one. It'll be exciting to have her back. She's done so many great oh. hits for us. Noises Off, which we were both in. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the Current Rumors, which we are both in. Yes! Are we going to be in Sweet Charity too? Oh, I don't know. I don't think anyone wants to hear it. No. That, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our last musical of the season. So I'm sort of working backwards on this. Our opening musical is called Lucky Stiff. And this is by uh, Aaron's and Flaherty, who wrote Ragtime, Once on this Island, great, great musicals. Um, this was their, their sort of, their premier hit, their off-Broadway hit. Won the Richard Rogers Musical Award, uh, was a big off-Broadway hit in New York, and this really put them on the map. And I've been thinking about this musical for a long time, because I think it's a great musical for our audience, uh, and I think this is the time to do it. Um, How so? I mean, what, what, what appeals to you? I mean, what stands out to you and says... Well, it has a great story. Uh, the story of uh, our hero, in this case, uh, hapless British shoe, shoe salesman, Harry Witherspoon, who inherits six million dollars from his dead uncle, who is a New Jersey casino owner, on the condition that he takes the corpse of his uncle on a tour of Monte Carlo and does <laughs> all these different things. And then he can get the six million dollars. If he doesn't do those things, that the, the, the booty's gonna go to the dog home in Brooklyn, which is run by Annabelle Glick. So she's on the trail of Harry to make sure he does everything right. And they start falling in love, even though they're, they're both sort of chasing the same money. So it's got this great love story. Uh, it's got a little bit of a murder mystery thing going on. A little dash of weekend with Bernie's. That's right. right. There, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's got uh, a great theatricality and farcical elements similar to Around the World in 80 Days that we did, oh, you know, um, like five or six years ago. So all those elements together and the wonderful music uh, make me believe that our artist is just going to eat this one up because it's just absolutely delightful. So those are our musicals. And, you know, for, for our audience that uh, wants to take advantage of the four musical package. They've got those two plus CCMT's great offerings, The Sound of Music and Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. So I think as a that's a whole lot of wow for. <laughs> that is a package, whole lot right? of wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
so should we talk about the play? Yes. All right. Uh, so we open with Lucky Stiff, and then we jump into our second offering, uh, and uh, we're doing The Underpants, adapted by Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Yes, need we say more? <laughs> yeah. We did, uh, we did Picasso de Le Pen, mm -hmm. his other play. Uh, it was a big hit. You're right. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's just great. And this is interesting because it's adapted from a German play from the 1920s of the same name. 1910. 1910. Carl, Carl uh, Sternheim right. uh, uh, wrote it, actually directed by Max Reinhardt. Oh, oh great. Yeah, how about that, before yeah. he blew up and became Max Reinhardt? Right. Well, it's interesting because it was, you know, the original was, was a political satire. And I think mm. one of the fun things that Steve Martin has done is he's, he's turned the emphasis from political satire and more into cultural observation. Because the story is uh, about uh, a young couple, uh, Theo and Louise, and Louise one day when there's a parade with the king going by, uh, unfortunately her, her bloomers fall down underneath her dress. And she quickly steps out of them and tucks them into her pocketbook. And they're kind of hoping to get away with this, but the husband's very worried that it's going to be a scandal. And indeed, uh, guys start showing up at their apartment hoping to rent rooms. And Steve, what Steve Martin's done is, that's so great is not only is it very funny, but he's, he's managed to make it really, uh, really about our contemporary culture's kind of obsession mm -hmm. with fame and with sex. I mean, look at reality shows yeah. now. I mean, oh do God. we need any more evidence of, of that obsession? And so I think this story really plays really nicely into that pocket. Um, and also, it's Steve Martin. Steve. Martin. I mean, the guy, he's you know, an amazing com com comedian oh. and actor, uh, writer, playwright, essayist, novelist, uh, musician. Movie star. Movie star. Um, you know, I want to see what, it, what his mind comes up with. Yeah, yeah, right. definitely. Right. Uh, then uh, we are doing Christmas Carol again. I think next year will be our 14th or 15th year of that, won't it? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, I will have to <laughs> fact check that. I think it's 14th. Yeah. Um, and it just, you know, I, I love Christmas Carol because it's such a classic Victorian telling of that story uh, with great special effects and great music. I mean, the quartet that sings. Oh, absolutely. The big dance sequence. Um, you know, and every year, Scott Dennison and the production team, they add some really nice elements and just make it even better. But uh, it's, you know, it's moving and scary and everything you want Christmas Carol to be, right? And, and, and I love it, uh, um, you know, from this side of the lights because you, you get to see so many different performers grow yeah. from role to right. role throughout the, the, the cast and, and it really is in the greatest sense of a family, that cast, yeah. absolutely. And, yeah. and the audiences love it. They come, I mean, I am so, so happily uh, 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 encouraged by the fact that there's so many repeat viewers. Every year it's become like a holiday tradition for a yeah. lot of families and it's, it's really yeah. exciting. It's great. Uh, then we turn the corner on the new year with Old Wicked Songs by John Marins. Old Wicked Songs. I've always loved this play. I saw the original New York production quite a few years ago and just fell in love with it. The, it's the story of a young American piano prodigy who's having difficulty playing. Uh, and he's sent to study with uh, a great teacher in Vienna. Turns out the teacher is a vocal teacher and the young American piano prodigy is not very happy about that because the teacher wants to work with him on and have him learn uh, Robert Schumann's dictor lead, the song cycle. Mm. Uh, so, and, and he's going to, this working on this music, this powerful, beautiful music is going to unleash and uncover uh, a lot of what's blocking both of them, it turns out, mm. uh, having to do with memories and uh, a lot of issues. And it, I just love plays that use art within their framework to make their point. Whether to, it's to, painting. to bridge the gap between these these very uh, polar opposite characters right. in a lot of ways. Right. And I, I think it's funny the the uh, poets was the poet song is that the yes. translation of uh, of Schubert's um, work. A lot of it is a duet, yes. where they have to learn through the music to, is, is this right? They have to learn to work together uh, yes. so that they can, yeah, so they yes. can accomplish that. And it's a really a, a beautiful and poetic bridge. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of piano playing and singing within the play. It's just, just fantastic. I know our audience is going to love it. Uh, similar to, like, the way they responded to two pianos for hands. Oh, yeah. And, you know, plays oh. like that. Uh, and then that brings us to the spring and to our April production, 
and we're doing the... Th what are the 39 steps? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part of the I movie. Know, right. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, movie. Alfred Hitchcock. Right, so this is this fantastic theater piece. Someone took the Alfred Hitchcock movie and the spy novel it was based on and created this wild, fantastic theater piece. A genius. Yeah. It, it, it's amazing. With four actors playing something like 128 characters. Yeah, it's something like that. Right. I mean, there, there's a chase across the... the uh, on top of a train. A moving train. Yeah. Right, on stage. On stage. Uh, plane crash, chases, I mean, turns uh, and double turns. There's uh, the three or four different countries. Right. You know, uh, 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 I don't know how many locations. Yeah. Tons uh, of accents. Always great. Oh, yeah. always great. Yeah. So, you know, this, again, <laughs> is, you know, similar in its theatricality uh, to, like, an Around the World around in the world 80 Days. days. Uh, you know, I, and I just love theater like that, that really is, you know, you know you're watching a play. You know you're oh, watching yeah. theater. It's not, it's not trying to be real at all. That's my favorite kind. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but I do want to talk about Off Center, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and so what is our, our Off Center season? Why do we do it? Right. We do Off Center because we want to be able to do new work, provocative work, edgy work. It's really important for, to provide that to the community and for the health of the company and to, and to provide new and edgy work that's really well done, that has the same quality of actors and productions that the main stage And has. up close and intimate. Yes, and we do it in night stage three, 120 seats. You know, you're right on top of it. Perfect venue awesome. for that kind of thing. Um, so next year, we're doing two pieces again. We're, uh, in the fall, we're doing a world premiere of a brand new play with music called Status Update. Love that title. Uh, about a young woman who is probably spending too much time online, <laughs> at least she is according to her, her boyfriend and the friends in her life, and she actually gets sucked into the internet. She uh, actually? Actually sucked into the internet, where oh. she meets Keyboard Cat and <laughs> all the people trying to friend her like her mother. So, you know, it's really fantastic idea, kind of modern Alice down the wormhole right. instead of rabbit hole. Uh, so, pretty excited about that one. And then in the spring, our second off-center show is Pilgrim's Musa and Sherry in the New World by Yusuf El Gwindi. And I'm really, really psyched about that because uh, it's basically a romantic comedy mm -hmm. uh, about the burgeoning relationship between an, an Egyptian cab driver and this very unusual Caucasian-American waitress. Uh, and it's funny and surprising uh, so, on that level, it works as a pure romantic comedy. But it has a twist as well. Yeah, because, you know, it really explores the, the cultural differences and, and ec different expectations culturally between Middle Eastern values and contemporary American values. And I just think that's a great uh, topic to be talking about now. And now, Gindy's, you know, a great playwright who's had yep. a, a number of successful productions in the Bay Area that, that, that people have just loved. He is definitely an American playwright to watch. Yeah, we're very lucky to have him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's a pretty good season, don't you? I think it's a rocking season. God, we work so hard on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's the season, the 2012-2013 season. Uh, musicals, comedies, drama, new plays, premieres. I mean, a tremendously wide and dazzling array of theater offerings, and I hope you'll join us. Uh, you know, one of the, the things I didn't talk about that really drives how we pick a season is our mission. Uh, we are absolutely devoted to celebrating the power of the human imagination by picking work that is emotionally engaging, intellectually involving, and visually astonishing. And I think you're gonna get all of that in all of the plays and music. Oh, absolutely. Right. So, come and check it out. It's really good. <laughs>